Welcome back to the uh, YouTube channel. Today I am actually tackling the most common procedure uh, that we do in chronic pain management, the epidural steroid injection. Um, I know we put out a lot of content on some high level procedures because those really require a lot of extra time to educate the patient, but given that this is the most common thing um, that we do in pain management, I think it's important that we cover um, and give patients a better understanding of what an epidural is, what it does, and what the process is like. So the epidural space is literally just a space in your spine. That space runs all up and down your neck to your lower back. Um, and that space is where the spinal nerves and the discs essentially live. So by targeting those areas with anti-inflammatory medication, essentially a cortisone shot um, into the spine, you can literally give the nerves and the discs a bath of steroid to reduce inflammation. Now, if we're targeting the mid-back, that would be for pain radiating around to the flank. Um, if we were targeting in the lower back, that would be for more pain going down the leg. If we were targeting in the neck, it would be more for pain going down the arm. So as you see, you can target a number of levels in the spine depending on where the source of the problem is. Now, how would you determine where it's coming from? You would send the patient for an MRI. So I would say pretty confidently that 100% of our patients are getting MRIs um, you know, prior to an injection like this. Follow-up question to that, how recent does my MRI have to be? Um, you know, that's not a set in stone number, but typically about two years would be a reasonable look back. Now, if somebody's been in an accident or fell down the stairs, obviously you may want to re-image, um, but you do want imaging in general to really identify where we're targeting. So the epidural space is, as I was describing, a potential space in the back. It's not a wide open space but it is a space you can get into using a technique called loss of resistance. And so we'll show that in a little bit. Um, below the epidural space is the dura mater. That separates your spinal fluid from the epidural space. So the goal is to get into the epidural space, not go through the dura. Once you go through the dura, you're basically doing a spinal tap and the patient could get a headache uh, from doing the procedure if you go too far. With the needle. So this is all done under x-ray guidance so that we can safely know that we're targeting down to the epidural space and not beyond that. Um, each region of the body has a different pattern of pain. The neck, the nerves in your neck go down the arm, the nerves in the mid-back um, obviously wrap around to the front, and in the lower back those nerves would go down the leg. Obviously the most common is sciatica, so this is the treatment for low back and pain going down the leg coming from a degenerative disc. Um, some important points here, uh, we do check blood sugar and diabetics on the day of the procedure. If you're on any kind of anticoagulation, then um, basically we would have to hold that and those are questions we may have to run by your cardiologist. So on the day of the procedure, you come into a procedure room. Everything we do is done under fluoroscopic guidance. Additionally, we use sterile technique. So basically, um, after you're sterilized, a little bit of numbing is placed into the skin, and then an epidural needle is inserted down to the level of the epidural space, and we're using live x-ray to guide that needle so we can see right where it's going. Um, once we're in the epidural space, we typically inject a little bit of contrast dye. The contrast will allow us to see the medicine spreading because steroid doesn't show up on x-ray. That's the reason we put the contrast so you can see uh, before you commit to putting the steroid in that the medicine is going where you want it to. Um, so that makes it a very accurate procedure, a very pinpointed procedure. Um, you know, this whole process literally takes, you know, two to three minutes um, for most patients um, under x-ray afterwards. You put a Band-Aid on the back um, 
and you're good to go. So this is a quick, easy way to target a degenerative disc. Now, people often ask, is it mechanically changing the disc? The short answer is no. What you're doing is you're putting an anti-inflammatory around the disc to reduce inflammation. Um, what sort of complications can you be worried about from an epidural injection? Um, so the main ones that, that you would worry about, so there's side effects. A side effect would be elevation in blood sugar, you know, potentially feeling changes in moods, facial flushing. Um, you know, those are more side effects in terms of complication. You know, you look out for a spinal headache. Normally the practitioner will know if they got a spinal leak during the procedure because you'll see spinal fluid coming out. And the right thing to do in that circumstance would be to inform the patient. You can treat it conservatively, caffeine, hydration. Um, you know, there is a, a possibility of doing an epidural blood patch, but that's few and far between. Um, injection site reactions, you know, could be an issue, possible infection, uh, allergic reaction to the medication. These are all super rare. I mean, I would put these in the one in thousands um, type of issues. You can get some flare up of the pain after the injection. So I get about one a week where the patient feels a little worse um, temporarily after the injection and we try and just explain to them, you know, to, to ride it out a little bit if the pain is worse. And that could be from the steroid irritating the nerve temporarily, could be from the actual needle placement, you can have soreness. We do everything we can to try and minimize that. Um, again, some people do get side effects from the cortisone, like a flush reaction. Uh, those all go away, so those are not kind of permanent side effects, they're temporary. But overall, in terms of doling out uh, epidural injections, typically we try and limit to three, maybe four a year. Um, keep in mind, it can take a couple days for the shot to kick in. Uh, the current guidelines as of December of 2021 are that patients um, should space out their injections by approximately three months. Now, if you have a shot and it's short-lived, that doesn't mean you can't have one for three months. What that means is you might need to try a different approach. So there are some loopholes for getting shots in quicker um, if need be. So I hope that's um, a helpful explanation of an epidural injection. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, put them in the comment. Please don't make them patient specific for HIPAA reasons. If you like seeing these videos, please like, please follow, um, and help us to uh, spread the word on YouTube. Thank you.